Okay, in this video we are going to tackle the fairly complicated subject of u-substitution. It's actually how we reverse chain rule derivatives, how we undo derivatives for a composite function. It's going to be a little bit tricky at first, but then these, these questions are all very repetitive, so hopefully the more that you do them, the easier they will get. Uh, but it can be a little bit challenging at first. Before we get into the notes, I want to review. Typically, I would do a warm-up, uh, which, which covers a little bit more in depth. Uh, but here, we'll just do this quick little example. It says, suppose you have some original function sine of 7x. Then we know I could take the derivative, and it would be 7 cosine 7x. And that 7 would kick out to the front because of the chain rule. Okay, so we know if that's my original function, I could take the derivative. Therefore, if I were to integrate... Uh, and if I was trying to undo 7 cosine 7x, and if I'm trying to work my way backwards, if I know that was the derivative, I could integrate it and tell you the original function. Just work your way backwards. Must have been sine of 7x plus c, right? If the derivative of that is this, then the integration of this must be that. Plus c. Don't forget the plus c. But what if, when you're integrating, what if you're supposed to have a 7, but it's not there? Right? How would I integrate uh, just a cosine of 7x? Or in other words, uh, if your original function is sine of 7x, you know the derivative is supposed to have 7, but what could that original function have been so that the derivative doesn't have the 7, and so that it's just a, a 1 cosine 7x? Well, the answer, you may be able to figure it out, your answer would be something like this, 1 7th sine of 7x, right? If your derivative was supposed to have a 7, but it wasn't there, it means your original function had a 1 over 7 on it, and then when I took the derivative of this, when it had the 1 over 7, 7 cosine 7x, the 1 over 7 that was there at the beginning ended up canceling with the 1 uh, that, that ended up kicking out because of the chain rule, giving me the derivative uh, cosine 7x. Okay, so when you're integrating, if you're supposed to have a number that's there, but it's not there, you account for that thing being missing by having a 1 over that missing number on your original function. And if your original function has a 1 over that thing, uh, that, that would explain why the derivative didn't end up having the number that, that you thought should have been there. Okay, so that's the little kind of thing to store in the back of your brain when we go through and when we integrate. We're going to like it when things match up perfectly. But if you're just missing a constant, uh, you, can, you can end up figuring that out. Or here's another one. What if it was a 14 uh, as my derivative? What if I had a 14 cosine 7x? Well, that means your original function must have been a 2 sine of 7x, because then when you take the derivative, the 2 and the 7 would kick out, and then it would give you the 14 as you were supposed to. So what happens when I'm integrating, and that number doesn't match perfectly with what it's supposed to be? It can either be too small, that number could be missing, or it could be too big, it could be uh, a scale factor too, too large. Uh, but we can always account for that constant being off by just having some coefficient, maybe a 1 over that number on your original function, or maybe a 2 on your original function, uh, but we can always deal by being off by a constant. We just have to work a little bit harder for it. Okay, so these ones are going to be a little bit weird, uh, especially the first couple, if this is the first time you've ever done use substitution. It's going to be a little bit challenging at first, but uh, the, these three pages in the notes are going to be very repetitive. Uh, the idea is, when you see something that looks uh, like this, it's a product, but that wasn't the product of product rule, right? This is your derivative. It says integrate with respect to x, all the stuff in between them. That's your f prime. That's your derivative, and you're trying to work your way back and answer what the original function was. But if this is your derivative, that actually was not the result of product rule. This would have been the result of a chain rule. Right, you have something to the fifth power, and then you see you've got the inside derivative, right? The derivative of that inside stuff is there. Uh, so what we're going to be doing with this use substitution, even though it's going to work for some products, and it's going to work for some quotients, what we have to remember is we're not undoing derivatives with product rule or with quotient rule. We're actually undoing derivatives that were done with chain rule. Right, so we're, we're reversing chain rule derivatives 
that's used substitution. It's going to work with some products and some quotients, but there must be a relationship between those chunks. One of them must be the derivative of the other, or it can be off by a constant. All right, so the first thing is identifying if it is a U sub or if it's not, right? Are there two chunks and are they related as one of them the derivative of the other? But what you would do is you would identify the piece that was causing chain rule, right? So if you were taking the derivative, you ended up with something to the fifth power. You know your original function must have been something to the sixth. But you have to identify which one of the two pieces was causing chain rule and then which one was the result of chain rule. Right? In general, you set the higher power term as your u, or it's the chunk that has something happening to it. The 2x is just innocently sitting there. Uh, the 2x was the result of chain rule, but it was the x squared plus 1, the inside chunk, the chunk that had something happening to it. That was the one that was actually causing chain rule. Right? So the first thing is identifying if you're going to use u sub, which for these three pages of notes, yes, you're going to. But then you identify the u, and that's the chunk uh, that, that was causing the chain rule. Typically, it's the one that has something happening to it. Then what you're going to do is take the derivative. Uh, so du dx, the derivative of u would be 1. Uh, that would be 2x. And then you're going to kick the dx over. So du would be equal to 2x dx. Uh, I'm pretty much always going to skip this step in the future. right? Just not going to do it. Identify the u. And then I take the derivative, but remember, we kick the dx over. Uh, so I, I identify the u, the chunk that was causing chain rule. Then I'm going to take the derivative, figure out, hey, what would the differential du be equal to? And then I'm going to check, how does this compare with that stuff that's in my integration? Does it match perfectly, or is it off by some constant? And if it's off by a constant, you've got to fiddle with it, and you've got to do a little bit more work. Uh, but if it matches perfectly like it does here, right? You had u to the fifth power, then all of this extra stuff, the 2x dx, that's equivalent to du. Uh, so since that matches perfectly, my substitution is going to work well. We have the integration symbol. That stays the same. Now all of this stuff, it was x plus 1. Remember, x, plus one, uh, x squared plus 1. That's u. So instead of x squared plus 1 to the fifth, we're going to have u to the fifth. And then all of this stuff, the 2x dx, all of that stuff is equal to du. So I identified the u, the term that had something happening to it, the chunk that was causing chain rule. I identify the u, I take the derivative, and I check how does that relate, how does it compare to the stuff that was in my original integration. Then I'm going to translate, I'm going to shift all of that integration over so that instead of it being defined by x, so instead of having x's in the function, instead of it being a dx differential, I'm going to shift it over so that it's all defined now by the variable u. That's called a u substitution. Switch it all over to being in terms of u. And now notice, this is no longer a product. That's just a power term, right? There is no product rule. So when I see multiplication, you can't just integrate the first, integrate the second, and then multiply them. No. Or when I see a division, I can't just integrate the top and the bottom and call it a day. No, there is no product rule. There is no quotient rule uh, for integrating. But we're not undoing product rule or quotient rule derivatives. We're actually undoing a, a chain rule derivative. Uh, so I can integrate some products and some quotients as long as the relationship uh, between those two chunks one of them's the derivative of the other. It's uh, actually, you can switch it to be an in terms of u. And then that u is something pretty easy, right? I could add 1 to the exponent, divide by that new number, of course. Don't forget your plus c. So this was a product, couldn't integrate it, but when you switch it over to being defined by this new variable u, now that's a very easy integration. Now you have to be careful. Two big things that students are prone to do. A, don't forget your plus c. Right? That's silly. Don't do it. Always, always, always for your indefinite integrals, remember to put your plus c. But then the second thing, the question was originally defined by x. Right? You had this chunk to the fifth power, which was x's. Then you had the dx, the 2x and the dx. If the question begins with the variable x, then your answer should end with the variable x. You should not box this. I do not want to see 1 sixth u to the sixth power. What you would need to do is reverse substitute, and instead of u, switch it back to being in terms of x. So I have 1 sixth of x squared plus 1 to the sixth power, right? 1 sixth u to the sixth power plus c. And check it out. That would be the original function 
that would give you this as the derivative. Don't believe me? Check it, right? We can always check by taking the derivative. If this was my original function, when I take the derivative, of course, the constant's going to go away. It could have been there, but the constant would go away when you take the derivative. Here, that 6 would multiply to the front, so I'd have 6 stuff to the fifth power. Whatever's inside would stay inside. And then I would have to account for that inside piece by doing chain rule. So if you were to check it by taking the derivative, the 1 sixth would cancel the 6, leaving you just the stuff to the fifth power. And then that 2x that was there, remember that was the result of chain rule. But it was the x squared plus 1. That was the term in my original function that was causing chain rule. Okay, so kind of thinking about it this way, remember, you're your derivative that you're looking at. If you were really supposed to have a 6 here, right? You're supposed to have a 6 stuff to the 5th power to account for the 6 that was supposed to be there but was not. You ended up just having a 1 6th on your original function. Okay, So that, that's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, u substitution, it takes, takes some practice. The general idea, identify the u, take the derivative, compare to see how this matches. If it matches perfectly, switch it all over. If it doesn't match perfectly, you have to do a little bit more, then you switch it all over. So translate it over to being defined by u, which now this should be something pretty easy to integrate. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new number, and then reverse substitute. So instead of u's, you switch it back to being x's. And if you want to check, uh, check it by taking the derivative. When you take the derivative, that derivative had better require the use of chain rule, because that was the whole point. U substitution undoes a chain rule derivative. Uh, but the stuff that you end up with after you take the derivative should match what was in your integration uh, to begin. So you can always check by taking a derivative. Don't forget. OK, let's move on. Next one, I see I've got x squared. And then I have 2x cubed plus 5. And that stuff is being raised to the fourth. First step is identifying which one of those two pieces is the u. Which one of the chunks has something happening to it, right? You got the x squared chunk, then you got the 2x cubed plus 5. Uh, that's the one that has something happening to it. So u, I'm going to set it equal to 2x cubed plus 5. And then I know it's weird, even though it's an integration problem, the first thing you do is take the derivative. So it'd be a 6x squared dx. So in a perfect world, I would have had a 6x squared. Mm, I didn't have the 6. All I had was the x squared and the dx. So you're basically thinking, OK, what could I do to go from 6x squared, which is what I would really love to have, uh, to having the x squared dx? Like What happened? Why, why did I not have the 6 in that derivative? Well, to go from a 6x squared to a 1x squared, you would need to divide by 6 which means on the other side, you would also need to divide by 6. To account for the 6 that was supposed to be here, but was not, it means your original function had a 1 sixth out in front. And that 1 sixth out in front of the original ends up making that 6 cancel, and is why it's not there in the derivative. Okay, But again, identify the u, take the derivative. This is what you're supposed to have. This is what you actually do have. Whatever algebra you need to do, multiply by something or divide by something, whatever you have to do to make this match what you have, just make sure you do the same thing. But now I'm able to, uh, to translate this stuff. Right? The integration symbol is still the integration symbol. Now all of this stuff that I'm going to circle, the dx and the x squared, right? the, the, the x squared and the dx, all of that can be rewritten as 1 sixth du. I'm going to put the 1 sixth out in front. I'm going to put the du at the end. So the integration symbol was the integration symbol. But then all of this stuff that I circled, x squared and the dx, that changes to the 1 sixth du. Then I had this chunk to the fourth. So now my function in terms of u is this just u to the fourth. So I identify the u. It's the chunk that has something happening to it, just the inside piece. Uh, then I'm going to take the derivative, and I compare this, what you're supposed to have, to, to, to that, what you actually have. Then you make it match. And whatever you need to do to make it match, make sure you do the same thing. But conceptually, why is this 1 sixth here? Well, because your derivative was supposed to have a 6, but it wasn't there. And to account for the derivative having that, uh, that 6 missing, to account for that number that was supposed to be there but was not, your original function had a 1 over that number to make it cancel. Okay, but I identify the u, take the derivative, make it match, then I switch it all over, 
Now I'm finally ready to integrate. Don't forget about this 1 6 that's out in the front. But I'm going to integrate. So I'll have 1 5th, u to the 5th, plus c. 6 times 5 is 30, so I got 1 30th, u to the 5th power, plus c. Don't forget your plus c's. And then the last thing would be to reverse substitute. 1 over 30, and then you have 2x cubed plus 5 to the 5th power plus c. That's what your original function could have been if your derivative is all this. Don't believe me? Let's check it. Let's take the derivative. Now if I have a 1 over 30, I'm just going to copy that coefficient. And then you have something to the 5th power, so it would be 5, something to the 4th, whatever's inside would stay inside but then you would have to account for that stuff inside. And the derivative of that inside piece would be your 6x squared. And then, of course, the derivative of the constant is 0. So let's see. 6 times 5 is 30. So the 1 over 30 cancels with the 5 and the 6, leaving me with uh, the 2x cubed plus 5, that chunk to the fourth. And then I also had that x squared, right, which was what my integration began as. So remember, you can always take the derivative to check. When you take the derivative, it should use chain rule. Um, but when you take the derivative, what you end up with should match uh, what your original uh, integration had between the integration symbol and the differential. All right, so check it by taking a derivative. Always, always, always a good idea. All right, let's do a couple more, and then we'll end this video. Here we've got some chunk that's getting square rooted. And then I've got the extra x kind of just hanging out. Uh, so if you need to, you can you can rewrite this. You have, you, uh, not you, let's, let's leave it. Actually, no, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it as it is. Uh, first thing is to identify which chunk is the u. Is it going to be the x? Or is it going to be the x squared plus 3? Well, one of those chunks has something happening to it. The other one's just sitting there chilling. Uh, kind of was the result of chain rule. The u is going to be the inside piece, the one that has something happening to it. Generally, it's the higher order chunk, too. Not always, but generally. Okay, so u is going to be the x squared plus 2, or plus 3. Then the derivative, see the derivative of x squared would be 2x, then kick over the dx. So in a perfect world, I would have had a 2x dx, right? That's what you're supposed to have. Here is what I actually do have, right? That's what you're supposed to have. Here's what you actually do have, x dx. Uh, to make that match, you're going to need to divide by 2, right? To change the 2x into the 1x, you divide by 2. So if du is equal to 2x dx, that means 1 half of du is equal to 1x dx. So I identify the u, take the derivative, make it match, and then let's switch it all over. The x dx, all that stuff is going to change to your 1 half and du. Right, so the stuff that's triple underlined, that's your 1 half du. Then you have the square root of this stuff. So we have just the square root of u, which you would probably want to rewrite it as u to the 1 half power. And then you can finally integrate. Right, Your original was a, was a multiplication, was a product. There is no product rule for integrating, so you cannot integrate right now. But luckily, there's a relationship between those two chunks. Right, One of them was the derivative of the other, or it was off by a constant. It was off by that one-half scale factor. Uh, so since there was a relationship between those two terms, those two chunks, one of the chunks, that one of those was causing chain rule. The other one was the result of chain rule. Uh, so, so that was really the result, not of the product rule, but of a chain rule. And I can undo that via u sub. So identify the u, take the derivative, make it match, switch it all over. So that is defined by u's. And then notice, once you have it defined by u's, it's no longer a product, or it, it will no longer be a quotient. Now, that's just something that you can rewrite. And then you could use your power rule. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, and then divide by that new number. And then don't forget your plus c. So here, this would be the 2's are going to cancel, 1 third u to the 3 half plus c. And then remember, do not leave it with u's. Switch it back. So I got 1 third x squared plus 3 to the 3 half plus c. And you can check it by taking the derivative. I'm not going to anymore. I'm done. Right, you can check it. I'm not going to. All right, let's do... Um, yeah, let's do probably like at least one more in this video.
Okay, so here we've got a quotient, but this derivative, seeing the x on the top, uh, and then the square root of 3x squared plus 4 on the bottom, that quotient wasn't the result of a quotient rule. This quotient was actually the result of a chain rule. Okay, so we still have to identify what the u was, what was the chunk that was causing chain rule, and then what was the piece that was the result of chain rule. Which one has something happening to it? Well, that one's inside of a radical. So 3x squared plus 4, the one that was inside the square root, that's your u. The extra x on top, he's just kind of waiting to go away. Take the derivative. The derivative of 3x squared would be 6x. So in a perfect world, I would have had a 6 here. Now, if you have a 6, that's wonderful. Uh, if you don't have the 6, that's okay. You can always account for that 6 by, by, by not being there, by having a 1 over 6 on your original function. And that 1 over 6 on the original accounts for the, for the 6 that was missing for the derivative. So identify the u, take the derivative, check to see that's what it's supposed to be. Here's what it actually is. If those don't match, make it match. But whatever algebra, multiply or divide, uh, whatever you have to do to make it match, you do the same thing on the other. Then I can switch it all over. x dx is going to switch, and you have a 1 sixth du, right? All the stuff in the top, x dx, that changes to your 1 sixth and your du. Typically, I just like to put those numbers out in the front. And then I have 1 over the square root of u, because I had 1 over this chunk, square root of this chunk. So there we have it. Again, probably would want to rewrite it. Remember, it was a square root, so it's a 1 half power, but it was a square root on the bottom, so a negative 1 half power. And then I can integrate. If I add 1 to the exponent, it'll be a positive 1 half. I'll divide by that new number. And then here, 2 in 1 sixth, so that's going to reduce. You'll have a 1 third, something to the 1 half power plus c. And then don't forget to reverse substitute 3x squared plus 4. That is what your original function would be to give you uh, x over the root of 3x plus 4, uh, 3x squared plus 4 as the derivative. So use substitution, a little bit tricky. Hopefully it's, it's getting a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to pause, I'm going to end this video, and then we can uh, start the next one, and we'll, we'll do the next two pages of examples.